Hello guys, welcome to the second episode of our configuration management explanatory series. In this episode, we are going to go over the CM2, that is the baseline configuration. But as always, your support means a lot to me. And one free and easy way to contribute and support the channel is by subscribing to help grow the channel if you haven't done so already. Additionally, don't forget to give that like button a hit or a smash and ring the notification bell to stay updated whenever I release new videos. Thank you and let's dive right in. Baseline configuration CM2. What is a baseline configuration? A baseline configuration provides a stable and consistent reference point for the system or project. It represents a known and approved state of the information system. Baseline configuration serves as a basis for managing changes within the system. Baseline configurations are subject to configuration audit which help ensure that the actual state of the system matches the approved baseline. This is very crucial for the compliance, quality assurance, and the risk management aspect of cybersecurity or information system security. Baseline configuration serves as a form of documentation that is capturing the essential component and the settings of an information system within an organization. Now let's look at the REF4 and REF5. So this control, the CM2 baseline configuration, it is actually selected for all the three baselines within 53 REF4. That is the low baseline, the moderate baseline, and the high baseline. Likewise, the CM2 baseline configuration is also selected for the low baseline, moderate baseline, and the high baseline. All right, so now let's read the control requirement for CM2, that is the baseline configuration in 853 REV5. Baseline configuration, the control states that A, develop, document, and maintain under configuration control a current baseline configuration of the system and review and update the baseline configuration of the system. One, the assignment organization defined frequency. However, you know, way you want to review it or, or however frequency you choose to review it, that is your discretion or the organization's discretion. They can review it every year, every two years, you know, however way you want to do it or however way you want to review it, that is your call. That is your discretion. That is the meaning of the assignment. I keep repeating that. So the assignment is just giving the organization the discretion to choose however way they want to do it. Now, number two. When required due to assignment, organization defines circumstances. So you review and update the baseline configuration of the system when required due to assignment, organization define circumstances. That is, whatever circumstances call for you to review the baseline of the system. You know, that is a major upgrade. You, you know, you move from a lower upgrade to a higher upgrade, or you actually change, um, you know, uh, your, your uh source code uh, you know repository you know that you use to keep your baseline like you move from gitlab to say github or azure devops to you know bit bucket stuff like that you know so whenever there is a major change you know within that system you have to review your baseline configuration okay number three when system components are installed or upgraded so whenever you have a new installation of a system within that, you know, a uh, uh, larger system, maybe you have a subsystem that you actually install or implement within the larger system, you know, that will call for you to review your baseline configuration as well. All right. So now let's look at the discussion. And again, this discussion used to be called um, supplemental guidance in REF4, but in REF5 is called discussion. All right. So baseline configuration for systems and system component include connectivity, operational, communication aspect of the systems. Baseline configurations are documented, formally reviewed, and agreed upon specification for systems or configuration items within those systems. See that? All right, moving on. Baseline configuration serve as a basis 
for future builds, releases, or changes to the system and includes security and privacy control implementation, operational procedures, information about the system component, network topology, logical placement of components in the system architecture. Maintaining baseline configuration requires creating new baselines as organizational systems change over time. Baseline configuration of systems reflects the current enterprise architecture. That is the main point of a configuration baseline. That is what the control is saying. Now, moving forward here, you notice that the control enhancement, the enhancement number one, that is what the review and update. This has been incorporated into the main control itself. That is it here, review and update. So this uh, enhancement has been withdrawn and incorporated into CM2 itself. Now, now moving forward, enhancement number two, that is automation support for accuracy and currency. This is one of the enhancements that has been left in there. Now you can read the discussion and see what the uh, enhancement is saying. Enhancement number three, that is what retention of previous configuration. That is self-explanatory, self right? You have to retain your baseline configuration, even how to do major upgrade to the baseline of the system to you know, new releases, maybe release 1.0, release 1.1, release 1.3. You don't have to delete the 1.0, 1.1. You have to keep them for record so that you can do something we call the rollback in case something happened to the latest release, right? So that's what this enhancement is saying, retention of the previous configuration. All right, this enhancement for unauthorized software, this has been withdrawn, incorporated into the word CM7 enhancement four. Baseline number five, which is authorized software, this has also been withdrawn and has been incorporated into the CM7 enhancement five. Now, enhancement six, which is the development and test environment this is self-explanatory you need to have your development environment your test environment that is managed separately from the operational baseline configuration now the last uh, enhancement here is configure system and component for high risk area right this is the last enhancement for this control now let's look at some of the importance of the baseline configurations Number one, we have it provides consistency and stability of the information system. It enforces change control and version controls. It helps organizations better manage and mitigate the risk associated with the changes within the system. It helps with documentation and knowledge transfer. That is, if you have uh, your developer or if you have a group of developers that will, you know, that, that leave your organization or, you know, they move on to a different organization, as long as these baseline configurations are well documented, you know, the next developer you're going to hire will not have, you know, a hard time understanding, you know, what the, the codes are because it is actually documented and knowledge transfer will be much, much easier. It also helps in maintaining a baseline configuration for ensuring stability reliability, manageability of the system or project throughout their life cycle. All right, now let's look at the control uh, assessment approach. And again, as always, to ensure the proper implementation and optimal performance of this CM2 control, covering both its design and operational effectiveness, we take the following steps. You obtain and examine the configuration management policy and procedure that is the dash one controls right always always because you need to understand how the policy is you know uh, or how this control has been designed or how this control has been you know um you know uh, stated within the organization you know you need to understand that so the very first place you go is the policy and procedure and again obtain and examine the system security plan this is very important because a lot of time you want to read the implementation statement to see if there is any discrepancy between that implementation statement within the ssp and the policy and procedure the dash one right but for this control we also have to look at what the configuration management plan because there are few controls that have plan right you know like um uh this uh, cm uh, CM-9 has a configuration plan, you know, configuration management plan, you know, contingency plan has also its uh, its plan, uh, incident response has a plan, 
you know so these controls with a plan documentation besides the ssp you need to obtain that plan document to see exactly how it is being you know planned and is being documented and also documented baseline configuration settings you need to have those documentation if it is available now the next one here is you validate the baselines you know are created for the system in accordance with the defined frequencies and also you should look for source code repository or another method of maintaining the baseline documentation and configuration example of source code repositories are github gitlab and azure devops these are some of the tools or the technologies out there that serves as what source code repository or where we keep our baseline configuration for the systems so once you obtain uh you know um or you can do a walk through in fact you can make those uh, uh, system admins or the developers you know walk through the source code repository whichever one they use if it is github gitlab azure devops let them walk you through that and then you can ask questions as they do as they do the walk walk through like you're gonna, you're gonna ask them questions like hey uh what are some of the can you show me the versions of this source code right or this baseline you know at least show me two or three you know um previous versions of this baseline uh, configuration you know and they have to be able to show you when last was it as updated you know if they have this uh, uh update and commit who reviews the update to make sure that the update is needed you know those kind of things before it is being committed into the code right these are very very important you have to so this control honestly for me i feel like having a walkthrough of this uh, uh the tool or the technology they use be it gitlab github azure devops once they go through the entire um, configuration settings with you, that will be able, you'll be able to ask further questions, you know, as you watch what they're doing, you know, you'll be able to ask them question about how they actually control the baseline documentation. All right, moving on here. And finally, you may have to validate that the system in question is using the documented configuration, right? So, you know, this is uh how you know the current you know the production environment you know you might want to be able to see hey what version is this system what version of the baseline is this system running on and then you have to validate from the uh, source code repository uh, you know from the point of the commit which of the version is being committed on the system and stuff like that right so this is how you actually you know uh, review this control and make sure that the control is proper uh, is properly implemented uh, and is working as it should in order for you to pass or satisfy this control during an assessment. That's it for this second episode in our configuration management control. Please do like, subscribe, share, and comment below this video so the YouTube algorithm will expose these videos to lots of people who could benefit from these videos as well. Our next episode will be on CM3, that is the configuration change control. Remember, keep chasing your greatness and never stop believing in yourself. Thank you, and I will see you in our next episode.